Hi everyone, it's Desiree. Um, I hope that your semester has been a good one, that the beginning has been positive and you're making good connections with your classmates and with your instructors. I wanted to make a video just so you can continue to see my face and that we can have some semblance of normal connection with each other. And so tonight I'm gonna to talk to you about some technology integration concepts. There are two different models to help you understand there's a huge difference between using technology and integrating technology effectively. I wanted to put this background behind me because, um, number one, I'm at school and all you would see behind me are um, books and junk. So this is much better, I promise. And after all, hasn't this been what the weather's been like in Montana recently? So we'll just go with it. So um, tonight I'm gonna to talk to you about these two integration concepts. The first one is called the SAMR model of technology integration. And I'm actually going to open a presentation and walk you through that um, to introduce the concepts and, and help you have a better understanding of how they work. So let's go ahead, I'll share my screen with you and we'll jump in there. You don't need to look at me anyway. All right, so tonight we're gonna to be talking about integrating technology versus using technology. The first thing I wanna to talk to you about is this concept called the SAMR model of technology integration. And the idea behind the SAMR model is you would look at what you're doing with your students and deciding what's the best approach to teach your students when it comes to using the technology. You're focusing on what student outcomes do I want to achieve? So here's what the model looks like. If we start at the bottom, that yellow, um, rectangle, sorry, couldn't think of the word, um, is the most simplistic showing of the model, SAMR model. And so that's that where the S comes from, substitution. So this is when we take a tool, a digital tool, and we basically just use it as a substitute for uh, a more traditional tool. The next level, and I kind of hate to say the words next level because it makes it sound better, and I don't mean it that way. I mean just maybe deeper or more involved um, level is augmentation. And this is a direct substitute, but you also have some improvements. Like it really does help the learning or teaching process. Both of those steps in the SAMR model are in what we call the enhancement level it does make the lesson or the learning um, improve, but we could do more, right? If we, if we take and really dig deeper, we could then jump to uh, teaching and learning that's transformative or in the transformation level of the SAMR model. So the third level um, of the SAMR model, the blue one is modification. And modification means you're really redesigning the task at hand. Instead of asking students to do A, you're going to ask them to do B. So it's a different approach to the learning. And then finally, the top tier or the deepest or, um, again, not the best, but a different, and I would use the word deeper, a level of technology integration is that redefinition where you literally allow for students to create new knowledge you're gonna have a new task that you would have never thought you could do um, in your classroom. And so we're gonna take a look at an example here in just a second. So there are four levels in the SAMR model. You can see substitution, augmentation, modification, and then finally redefinition. Okay, this is another way to look at the SAMR model. And I really love this um, because I love asking questions to kind of get to answers. So the first question is going to be at the substitution level. And you ask yourself, what will I gain by re replacing the task with technology? What, what do I save here? Do I save time? Um, you know, what, what is my benefit? When we move to augmentation, ask yourself, does the technology tool add new features that actually improve the task? 
when you get to the modification level, ask yourself, does the task significantly change with the use of technology? And then finally, when you get to the redefinition level, does the technology allow for creation of the new task previously unconceivable? So those are the questions that you would ask at each level, just a different way of looking at the model. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's take a basic lesson that we would do in pretty much any classroom. Writing a short paper. I'm just going to move my camera again. There we go. Writing a short paper. So if our original assignment is to have a handwritten paper, maybe we're asking students to write an opinion paper. Oftentimes we give them a piece of paper, we give them a pencil or a pen, and we ask them to write on a specific topic. So let's look at the SAMR model implemented in this particular lesson. If we introduce the SAMR model at the substitution level, then basically we would say use a word processor. And really all you're doing is you're replacing your pen or pencil with typing. You're not really having a huge impact on the learning or the lesson itself. Now, let's go to augmentation. If we have a word processor that has a feature, like maybe a text to speech feature or has grammar checking feature, or it has, um, added tools, whatever those tools might be, that allow us to check our writing style and our grammar capabilities and those types of things. Now we've improved the writing process, not just substituting. Okay, modification level. So now maybe we're using a word processor with the text-to-speech function, but we share it on a blog and we allow stu other students or whoever, the public, to provide feedback. And then that might be incorporated to help your writing. Let's take that modification and change it a little bit because in, in my current situation and probably what you will do when you get ready to teach is you'll be using Google tools. Instead of using a, a word processing document and posting it to a blog, which is kind of a little old fashioned, a little. What you might do is you might use a Google Doc where the teacher shares the document with you and then is able to provide comments directly into your writing where she's not changing, she meaning me, is not changing the integrity of your writing but is offering you support, corrections, direction, and guidance. Okay. Now we've gone from writing with pencil and paper to actually collaboratively working with our instructor to make our editing, our writing and our editing effective. Okay, so now let's take the, the final level, redefinition. Instead of writing an assignment, what if we allow our students a menu of tools to choose from and they convey the concept that we want through whatever means? multimedia. So instead of writing a paper, they could do word art like we just did, or they could even record themselves um, doing an expository speech or opinion speech. Let's stay with the, the lesson that I'm talking about. Or perhaps they could write a rap that would help us understand their position a little bit better. Completely different thought than pen and paper, okay? So this is what the SAMR model allows us to do. It allows us to look deeper into our lessons and say, what's the best approach in teaching this lesson? How can I reach the most diverse learners, allow for differentiated instruction, allow for individual work by my students, allow for creativity, allow for innovative ideas to come forward. So just different, different ways of looking at how we can look at our lessons and integrate the technology. Okay, so now I need for you to understand that you look at the SAMR model and you use the SAMR model before you teach your lesson. It's really important that you are not necessarily reflecting but you are focusing on 
that substitution, augmentation, modification, or redefinition, how are you going to approach your lesson as you're planning it? Okay, whoop, I accidentally went backwards, sorry. <laughs> okay, so effective technology integration actually uses a different model to help you plan. Okay, so before you're doing your lesson, now we're gonna implement this uh, model called the TPAC model. It's one of my favorite models. I've used it for years, um, not only when I plan my lessons, but also when I teach teachers how to use technology. So here's how it works. You start with C, content. What do you teach? So I'm going to start out by saying, okay, I'm going to be teaching my students opinion writing. What do I want my students to learn? That there are specific elements to opinion writing, right? And so I wanna make sure that I'm focusing on what am I gonna teach? That's the first part. That's the easy part, right? We've got standards, we've got curriculum, we've got our learner objectives that we would use. So we've got the answer to that. Okay, next thing, pedagogy. I wanna focus on how I teach. So what I mean by this is, are, am I gonna stand up in front of the class and lecture the information? Am I going to put my students in think, pair, share um, timeframes? Am I going to do small group projects? Am I going to have my students work individually? Am I going to mix it all up where it's I do, we do, you do? All different kinds of how am I going to teach my students? Are my students going to get the material from me? Are they gonna read the material? Uh, how am I gonna assess my students? So this is this whole big question, <laughs> um, pedagogy how am I going to teach? That's really important. Now remember, you're just looking at that one specific lesson. You're not saying my philosophy on teaching is this. You're saying when I'm teaching lesson A, this is how I'm going to approach my teaching. And then finally, so we've got C, we've got P, and now we have T. So those three letters so far. We're going to focus on the technology. What tool am I going to use? And that should be what tools, right? Because we probably won't just use one tool when we are talking about integrating technology. If you're effectively integrating technology, you're not just using one tool. So if I'm going to write, I'm going to have my students write an opinion paper. I've got my content. I know what my learner objectives are. I need to make sure that I'm going to be teaching in a, probably what I would do with this one is a whole mix of things. I am going to show them, I'm going to tell them what, what I'm looking for. I'm going to show them an example of an opinion paper, maybe even write it while um, we're talking about it, right? And, and just model for them my thoughts as I'm writing. I might do this on the interactive whiteboard so that they can see my writing. I might do it under my document camera so they can see what I'm doing. Um, I might even type it in a Google Doc. It's totally up to you and your style and your learning environment. And now I'm gonna look at the technology and I even named a couple things there. So now if I'm doing opinion writing and I'm just looking to get kids to give me a piece of paper, I might just have them write it with pencil or pen and paper. If I'm looking at students sharing something that I want to have quickly, I don't want to have a bunch of paper around, I might just have them open up a Word doc and give me the information. Um, if I want to make this an in-depth learning opportunity for my students where I'm going to be asking for them to edit and revise and um, maybe even peer edit, right? Then I'm going to look at probably using Google Docs and maybe allowing them to collaborate with a partner or for sure I'm going to be in their document and give them feedback and guidance. Okay, so you just see where I'm going with this and then finally redefinition. I might take that stuff, all their writing that they've given me, and then I might ask them to provide me with a quick oral presentation of their writing and I might record it and keep it somewhere so that I can 
you know, refer back to it. Or I might have them create a presentation instead of a Word document with pictures and maybe they record their voice and tell me their opinion. So I can totally change what I'm looking for. If I'm trying to focus on writing, I have to be careful though. I don't wanna take that away from them. You could easily do a writing assignment and keep the writing element and then have them do just to kind of reinforce, have them do a presentation that includes images and um, audio recordings, um, cycling through slides, whatever it might be. Okay, so the TPAC model is what you look at before or as you're planning your lesson. Here's a better view of the TPAC model. So what I said was content, pedagogy, and technology. Those were the three circles that we looked at. That's what makes the TPAC model. So if we look at this, content knowledge, you need to know what you teach. Pedagogy knowledge, you need to know how you're going to teach your lesson. And then technology knowledge, you need to know what tools are available and what would work best. And possibly it's a, a differentiated, you may use some tools for some students and some tools for other students. The idea behind this model is they all overlap. Sometimes you're gonna have effective technology and content marriage. That's called your technology content knowledge. The most important thing is this little sweet spot right here. When you're focusing on your content, your pedagogy and the technology effectively, when you're planning your lesson, this is the area that you reach. This is nirvana, if you will, of technology integration. I actually found a great model of TPAC um, in a tool that I love called ThingLink. So I'm gonna take us out there real quick. And I'll just click okay to get that off my screen. Now you're gonna see some of my um, desktop here. Sorry about that. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So here's the um, TPAC model, but this is actually, it's the same thing, but I'm using a tool called ThingLink, which you'll learn about later. And ThingLink allows you to create an interactive image. So what we're looking at right now is an image of the TPAC model, but you can see now there are these red stars, um, red circles with white stars that are kind of beckoning us to do something. And here's how it works. If I hover over those stars, then I'm going to get more information. So for example, under technology knowledge, it says what digital tools are available to you and which would be the most appropriate for the specific lesson. If I hover here, here's a great statement. I use Google Classroom to push out assignments and resources, and I provide students feedback through Google Classroom. That's a perfect tool that allows me an effective way to teach and use technology. Okay, now this model is going to be in the information that you read in the discussion post for this assignment. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but I would strongly encourage you to visit this link and highlight each of the red stars that are in the ThingLink model, because I think you will really um, get a better understanding of the TPAC model when you do that. Okay, I'm gonna jump back here. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna jump back here in a second. <laughs> I went to the wrong window. Okay, here we go. I hope that makes sense. I think it will, especially if you go to ThingLink and you hover over those great um, hyperlinks to get more information. Okay. So I've talked about the SAMR model and I've talked about the TPAC model. The cool thing is you marry them together to get the best, most effective technology integration approach when you teach. So when you look at your SAMR model and, and just at the top, you see substitution is more of a surface learning, not better, not worse, just a little bit less deep of um, a, an approach and that makes its way through the model to a deeper learning. And you marry that together with your planning model, the TPAC model, which is understanding what am I teaching? 
how am I teaching? What tools allow me to most effectively teach that, that concept and allow students to learn the best in the most, most deep and meaningful way? It doesn't mean all students are gonna be using the same tools either, right? Okay, so that's the SAMR and the TPAC model. I hope they both make sense to you. I think they're super important. They're very abstract. So um, it, it can be a little bit difficult, I think. It can be a little bit difficult to understand them at first, but if you can kind of work your way through them slowly and even pick something that you think you might be teaching. So for example, my hand just disappeared. That was crazy, sorry. Uh, so for example, if you want to teach or you know you're going to be teaching um, the life cycle of a butterfly or the solar system or dinosaurs or these are just things we know are in the curriculum. Take any kind of concept that you know you would teach, nouns, verbs, adjectives and adverbs, and take that specific lesson idea and then try to use the SAMR model and the TPAC model to see how you might approach uh, integrating technology to make that lesson that much more um, effective and to engage your students a little bit more. Okay, I'm done. I hope that this video helps you understand those models and lets you complete the assignment.